Hello and welcome to this Dungeon Fog tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to look at the new backgrounds, templates, and how they work within Dungeon Fog. So I'm going to create a new map by simply left clicking on Create New Map, and automatically you'll notice that I have a lot of presets now available to me. Each one represents a different common biome that you might come across in your map making requirements. If I select, for example, Barrens, I'm presented with three options. Now, these three options depend on which subscription package you have chosen to go with. The first option is available to everyone, regardless of subscription level, and just contains a standard background for that biome. The other two options include props which you may not have access to if you don't have the right subscription. I'm going to select Barons. It automatically creates a name for me, but I might create a more unique name. And let's just call this Demo. Notice what it has done. It has created an infinitely loopable background for me. I can now begin working straight away on my structures, knowing that my background already looks pretty solid. Let's have a look at what Dungeon Fog's actually done. If I open up the stack, we can see that the contents of my stage, I've got a sand plane and a sand dry brush that has been applied to the entire thing. This creates this very interesting space. Now, let's say, for example, I needed to expand this because I hadn't given myself enough space. So I'm just going to add in an extra 15 blocks. And suddenly I notice that the texture is now repeating itself. How do I fix this? Well, I go to the props option and I simply select. I don't want barons. I want all packs and I will go to backgrounds nature. And there I will find a whole lot of different background presets as determined by the biomes. And I'm going to choose, let's say this one. And notice now as I bring it over this area, it's trying to apply this entire thing to the space, but my rotation wasn't preset to zero and my scale was not at 100. But as soon as I do that, I can now place this wherever I like. If I go snap to grid as well, that'll allow me to snap it into the grid and I can drop it down and look at what it does. It adds in another sandy plane with that dry texture over the top. So it just continues to create this wonderful background. Now, obviously I can go in to the original brush and I can edit that brush and add in some more detail as I need to or as, as I feel I want to carry across that map or open up depending on how I want and adjust it as I need to. Now I can continue to add more layers if I so choose, but this is just a very quick and efficient way of creating a really awesome looking background, I think anyway. Now I can work on top of this as I normally would. I can create a structure create a very simple structure. Some kind of cave cut out by the looks of things. And if I move this structure over to the edge of the map, and then I expand the map again, because I feel like I need some distance, I might want to apply another texture. So I go back to my props. Again, I select backgrounds. This time I'm going to go with this one, make sure everything is correct. I'm going to snap it in place. Now, backgrounds don't only sit in the props tool. They also sit in the brush tool. Here we can see we're in backgrounds nature and the brush tool is presenting us with a lot of different brushes. Some of them that look like mixtures. So there's a reason for that. These indeed allow you to mix over two different environments to blend them together, if you will, to create your own new unique environments. I'm just going to do this, and then I'm going to uh, change the softness so that it blends a bit better. And now we start to get transition zones that we can build in. They can be even more dramatic than that. Let's say, for example, we want our barons and we want to extend even further because we've realized just how much space our adventurers are going to need. We want to blend even further. But we want this section to be a different biome. So I'm going to go back to our backgrounds as a prop and I'm going to choose, let's say, water. And again, 
make sure that all of this is set correctly. And I'm going to snap this biome into place there. And remember, we had that brush that we drew. So we're just going to get rid of that brush for the purposes of this demonstration. I want you to see what I am talking about because it's a majorly powerful feature of uh, Dungeon Fog now. So we've now got this biome. It doesn't match very well. There's a hard line there, which we might not like. So we go to our brush tool and we can find a transition between the brown and water, between the rocky surface and the water surface. There are many, many different options for us to choose from. But let's use this one for now and we can just blend this out and in as we so need to, to create this very dynamic edge. And once again, we can zoom in and we can change that softness, really bleed it in and out. And suddenly we have quite, I would say, a dramatic coastline that our players can explore and discover. And we can just leave a little few edges here and there so we don't get that hard, hard edge. And there we go. We've got our very interesting transition. We now apply some props over that and it will look absolutely perfect. Rounding out the power of the background system for Dungeon Fog is the Paths tool. Now, there are specific paths that have been made to go with the backgrounds. Again, you'd find this in Backgrounds Nature and you can see there are a whole lot of different paths that marry up with the various biomes. Take this path, for example. I simply left click to make the shape of the path. I think that's okay. Let's choose our caps and let's say shrink and shrink. So now you can see the path is here, but it's not blending in. And the reason for that is that I still have my preset color values. But if I deselect it, look at how beautifully it blends in. And suddenly I've got this amazing complex cliff that I can just keep adding to in complexity as I need. What a wonderful array of objects. I can come in here and just put it in there, for example. And so now we have this shape that we are creating for our characters to have to move over. And so that is how the background system of Dungeon Fog works.